They murdered his friends. And they took the only thing he would kill for. If you want your kid back, then you gotta cooperate. Right? Wrong. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today we are taking a look at an extremely cool watch indeed. This is the famous Seiko H558-5009, better known as the Arnie, because of course, uh, Schwarzenegger himself wore this in a whole bunch of movies, which we'll get into in just a second. But it's actually really important horologically for some other reasons as well, which people tend to forget about, but we'll discuss that in just just a moment. Now, before I get into this review, I've got to do a wristwatch check if my camera <laughs> will ever focus. There we go. There's the Rolex Pepsi. Uh, I refer to it as the Hoffman, my little Hoffy, uh, because of course, Marathon Man, Dustin Hoffman wearing it in Marathon Man, actually in a whole bunch of movies. Um, maybe I should do a video on that. Uh, actually, I have. I have. So, wristwatch check done. Let's get on with the actual review. Uh, we'll get the dimensions out the way first. So, the diameter, we're looking at 46 millimeters, quite large, uh, mainly to do with that shroud. Inside, it's a little bit smaller, actually at 38. The thickness is 12.2, just over 12 millimeters. Lug to lug is 46 millimeters. And the lug width is 22. So the dimensions are quite large, but um, very contemporary. But of course, Arnie, and I've bought the, uh, the action figure, makes it look <laughs> positively uh, uh, mid-size. So there's old Arnie there. Now the watch itself is stainless steel with a plastic shroud that is held in by three screws there. And the H558 series of watches from Seiko is quite important, uh, not just because it's a movie star, but also it's a horological icon because it was the first dive watch to feature digital alarm, a chronograph uh, in a combination of analog and digital. Its uh, depth rating is 150 meters. It features a bi-directional bezel. Uh, I believe it's 60 click and it's accessible uh, by these cutouts on the shroud. I also love the way at certain angles that bezel insert looks like a very rich blue. Uh, I'm not sure if, if that is just my eyes deceiving me, but it, it really does look like a very dark navy blue. We have a button at the 10 o'clock and at the 8 o'clock, and then of course a crown at the 3 o'clock. Now the classic Arnie did come on a rubber strap and it's the only thing that's been replaced uh, on this watch. Unfortunately, the strap isn't original. Uh, however, it's, it's fairly uh, faithful to uh, Seiko rubber straps, but everything else is original. Uh, which I'm really, really happy about uh, because these are getting extremely um, rare and the, the prices are, well, it's, it's steadily increasing all the time because they are very desired by collectors uh, because of that combination of, of being uh, one of the first any digi watches from Seiko, a diver, I mean, and of course its um, cinematic uh, legacy with its connotations with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So the dial is, is really where it gets interesting because we have the display, the digital display at the 12 o'clock. The inner chapter ring uh, is a depth meter and then the, sli the one slightly above it where it meets the edge of the dial, uh, we just have a uh, minute track running around the outside. We have divers 150 meters written towards the, uh, the center, just under the hands there. It's not really orange. I, I thought it had faded, but actually I think that's the original color that, that, that it comes in. And at the top we have written there Seiko and Quartz. So it's quite interesting that they proudly say it's Quartz, you know. And so they should. It's uh, a technology that, that Seiko did pioneer. Because we don't have the day or the date, as you'd see, you know, like, like on the SKX here at the three o'clock. It's a cleaner, more uh, symmetrical look. We, of course, have the triangle at the 12 o'clock 
to make it uh, easy to distinguish uh, the orientation of the piece. The dial itself is a matte black and it's got a slight texture to it which is really really cool. The subtlety of, of the design of this piece and a lot of thought and intention has gone into it. The, the bezel sits slightly taller towards the outer edge protecting the mineral glass. I presume it's mineral. I'm not sure if it's if Seiko had already um, started using their proprietary hard lex because this of course is from the early 80s the original h55 started in 1982 and then was replaced by the fieldmaster now the fieldmaster variant of the h55 also gained quite a notoriety itself because it was used uh, during a, um, a team of explorers um, wore them when they climbed Everest in 1988. The watch was also worn on various expeditions to the North and South Pole by international teams of explorers. So not only is the H558 a movie star, uh, it's also proven in the field. And in fact, uh, part of the development of the H558, the engineers at uh, Seiko wanted a really tough uh, a module that could withstand temperatures of minus 40 degrees Celsius. So it kind of explains why it's got military following as well, but a large part of that has also got to do with its, its aesthetic. It's undeniable that it has a very tool-like look to it. It's extremely retro in the 80s, but, uh, and I think that's very kind of fashionable these days. You'll see little cues taken from uh, Seiko divers and if I bring in my Seiko SKX 013 there I bought this one because I'm uh, cannibalizing it for parts I'm in the middle of uh, modding or repairing uh, an SKX I have you can see the similarities in the hands they've just been made slightly smaller unfortunately this SKX doesn't have that uh, second hand but on most SKX is they still have that second hand. I love how the tip is white uh, and then blacked out towards the end and of course we have the counterbalance uh, loomed up uh, which is something that, <laughs> as you guys know does irritate me about some of the SKXs but that's just a personal pet peeve but it's cool to see that typical Seiko you know it, it, it's in a lot of their divers and of course the arrow minute hand again very typical of Seiko and the shroud is like the, the Seiko tuners and then the dial layout is very much Seiko and Seiko have a long history of making dive watches all the way back to the 60s so is it cool that it has those design elements in it and if we continue to look on the back we see the Hukusei Kanagawa inspired traditional kind of Japanese motif. Now unfortunately you can see the wear there, the, some of the frosting on the finishing of the, the wave has gone. Uh, I, this watch has been worn, although it's, it's in very used condition, it's not that bad. I've seen a lot of really beat up Arnie watches. Uh, there's lots of scratches and, and marks, but there's even a little dink there in the crystal. But I gotta say, I, I, it's all original and that's what matters. And you know, even rarely beaten up ones uh, in, in worse condition than this are still very, very much uh, sought after by, by collectors. The battery life is around about two years, although that can vary with use of the backlight. Accuracy wise, I gotta say it's behaving really, really well. Even quartz watches can have a great deal of variation, especially, you know, as, as they age. Uh, but luckily this one is still performing uh, plus a couple of seconds every day, which is just phenomenal considering its age. I love the three-dimensional aspect to that dial. It reminds me a little bit of a, like a Roman amphitheater with the, um, the way the digital display is, is, is placed at the, at the 12 o'clock. The lugs uh, kind of peek out from the shroud. Uh, very very rounded they don't protrude that far uh, which actually makes for the 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 wearing of this piece quite small don't get me wrong it's a large in diameter but it wears um, which is typical of a lot of Seiko divers it wears a little bit smaller which is great because I can still enjoy this piece we do have that famous Seiko loom and the watch does retain some of that charge I'll include a loom shot unfortunately because of its age I mean this is from the early 80s it doesn't retain or, or glow for that long although the backlight on the LCD still it works fantastically so let's run through some of its features of course we have the main timekeeping 
uh, displayed in analog. And then in the LCD at the top, you can set this actually to a second time zone. So it does have dual time. So if we press the button at eight o'clock, we cycle through the different modes. So we have alarm. If I unscrew the uh, screw down crown, to manipulate or set the alarm, you can <laughs> the crown actually you turn it to, to set the time. You see it changing there. That is really really cool. Um, so I'm glad I remembered to mention that. It's just something that the later uh, modules that replace the H558 did away with. It's it's quite a shame because I think it's a cool thing. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd include that. Press it again. We have the stopwatch to start and stop the stopwatch. You press the uh, button at the 10 o'clock, and this can record up to 60 minutes. It's a 60 minute stopwatch. And then you just pause it by pressing again, and then you hold it down to reset. Then we have day and date. You can choose what to display, which I think is really, really cool. Now, the only thing that is not functioning is the alarm sound. The alarm sound on this thing and it'll probably need to the, the uh, part of the the, the circuitry uh, replaced or, or, or fixed, which is going to be a bit of a pain because parts are very difficult to find. I might actually send it to um, Spencer Klein, who's a Seiko expert, has a fantastic channel. Shout out to uh, Spencer Klein. So, how did the name Arnie come about? Well, of course, it was worn by Mr. Schwarzenegger himself in no less than five movies. I wasn't aware of this. I only thought it was in Predator, but actually it was also in Raw Deal in 1986, in Running Man in 1987, also Predator in 1987, Twins in 88, and of course Commando in 1985, which I think is when it debuted. In the film Commando, we actually see a close-up of the watch and it's used as a plot device. However, uh, for the close-up, they replace the dial with a prop. Uh, so a little bit of a shame, uh, but it makes sense, I guess, because they wanted it to appear more obvious uh, to the audience. Both Commando and Rule Deal have these, I guess, tooling up scenes or gearing up scenes, just some fantastic juicy close-ups as Arnie prepares to go into uh, action and wreak revenge. It embodies that age fantastically, but also I think it suits the aesthetic very, very well. It's an extremely robust watch. It's very utilitarian. Sure, dated by today's standards, uh, but at the time it was, you know, the cutting edge of, of um, technology. Size-wise, it was a perfect fit for Arnie. What I think is really cool about um, him wearing it is that it wasn't just product placement. It was obviously his choice because he wore it in so many movies with diff and different characters wearing it. It wasn't product placement like the Bond franchise with the Amiga watches these days. It was him genuinely wearing that watch. And not only uh, Arnie, but there's a famous picture of the legendary Hollywood director James Cameron wearing the same watch and he very much is a watch enthusiast, diving enthusiast too. And I'm sure we're all familiar with Cameron and his collaborations with Rolex. It really does mean something when watch connoisseurs and enthusiasts, they choose to wear that watch, they're not paid to. Which I just think it, it, it has immortalized the Arnie, not only pop culture, but helped to really propel it into the mainstream. So let's pop it on the wrist and see how it wears. Okay, so there we go. Now, as you can see, even on my tiny little wrist, it wears really, really well. Uh, I think mainly because it's not that tall. It being quartz, uh, it doesn't require any extra room for uh, all the mechanical parts of the watch. So it's very, very comfortable. It only weighs 87 grams, uh, which is like, uh, you know, it's like a, a heavier G-Shock. Uh, in fact, it wears a bit like a G-Shock. From lug to lug, it is quite wide, even though the lugs are not that, uh, that big at all. Um, I could get away with wearing it. Of course, it looks like a, <laughs> like a Datejust 36 millimeter on good old Arnie, but you know, I, I, he's obviously a separate, different scale to me. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool piece. Extremely legible, uh, very, very fun.
So let's discuss the positives and negatives. I'll start with the negatives. Now, I'm not going to be overly critical on this watch because, to be honest, it really is a product of its day. It is, of course, very, very dated in its materials in the module itself. By today's standards, uh, it's quite rudimentary. It's quite basic. Uh, but for the early 80s, I think it was quite revolutionary, and we shouldn't forget that. I think the biggest um, downfall of this piece is it's getting really expensive. It's also difficult to source parts. You might have to cannibalize or, or buy a, a second one to, to, to find parts if you need to repair it. However, this is a really good example of one. And the fact that it's so rare these days and rather special uh, might make the wearer baby it which is a shame because it's it's not supposed to be handled with uh, kid gloves it's it's it really is made for task it's a true true dive and tool watch so those are the biggest negatives but the positives far outweigh them it's got a lot of charm it's got a ton of character it's a horological uh, important step in Seiko's history and it's a true true movie star just another notch on Seiko's already uh, extremely <laughs> large belt um, just incredible I can really see why Irony chose this watch I think it, it almost is a little bit like him it's 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 big it's bold but it's functional it's tough it's extremely robust well for its day it gets the job done uh, and i i don't think he he could have made a better choice very much in its own way it, it, it is pure class i mean it's a classic classic timepiece okay guys so that is a look at the seiko arnie uh, I'm probably going to enjoy it for a little while longer and then uh, sell it on. i got to be honest, I bought it just so I could review it. That's sometimes the only way you can truly experience peace. But it's been a very fun um, time indeed. I, I, of course, I'm going to pop it on a NATO and uh, <laughs> see how it wears. I think yeah, on an olive NATO, it just really will finish that, uh, that aesthetic. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, questions, opinions, and all the rest of it in the comments below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And I have got to get to the chopper. Ciao. Remember, Sally, when I promised to kill you last? That's right, Major. You did. I lied. Ah!